Look what that means to them. The first ever series victory against Sri Lanka. I'm wondering if anybody has the theme music to uh, The Undertaker, uh, which you would normally watch if you were a WWE WrestleMania supporter, because that's pretty much the somber, somber occasion that is uh, being experienced by every single cricket lover and player and uh, administrator who has been involved with Zimbabwe cricket for as long as Zimbabwe cricket has been in existence. Hello, good evening to you, and welcome to Dean at Stumps on Cappy Talk 100.4 FM Harare's Heartbeat. This is your weekly cricket fix. Uh, it is the only cricket show in the whole of Southern Africa that is an exclusive cricket show and, of course, uh, the podcast as well. If you just joined us, good evening to you as you... Uh, uh, or maybe also are aware we are live on Facebook. So for those of you, you who have family in the diaspora, uh, if you're able to send a WhatsApp message and tell them to jump onto Facebook, search for Capitalk 100.4 FM and join our conversation. We have a very, very full studio tonight. Haven't had as many people as this ever on Dean at Stumps, quite possibly even uh, on Capitalk 100.4 FM. Where do I start? Well, first of all, Let's just remind you as to why we feel so somber and disappointed because uh, last Thursday uh, the ICC made it public that Zimbabwe cricket have been suspended from all ICC activity. And uh, it uh, furthermore goes to say that uh, if the SRC do not reinstate the board, the Zimbabwe cricket board, which the SRC had suspended or dissolved within the next 90 days, then Zimbabwe cricket will be expelled. We do not want this to happen, do we? So in the studio, I have a whole host of guests who are very, very sad, worried, concerned, angry, and uh, understandably so. First of all, she's no stranger to Dean at Stump. She's been on here quite a few times. She's almost a permanent resident. <laughs> Captain of the Lady Chevrons, uh, Mary Ann Musonda. Hello, Mary. Hi, Dean. How are you? I'm well, my friend. I'm well, thank you. And then uh, making his debut on the actual Dean at Stump show, although he too has featured in a few recordings all-rounder and uh, one of the favorites of Zimbabwe cricket, Sikanda Razabat. Sikanda, welcome. Thanks, Dean. Great to have you here. Thanks, Dean. And then uh, also we have the head coach of the Ladies' Chevron team, Adam Chifu. Adam, very, very shy man. But I will say one thing on a more uh, lighter note. You are from my part of the world, Kadoma. Great to have you on the show, Adam. Thanks very much, Dean. And then the manager of the ladies' team, who's been working incredibly hard behind the scenes, and uh, not many people really know about it because she just puts her head down and works very, very hard, Samu Nkewani. Hello, Samu. How are you? Hi, Din. Thank you. Uh, great to have you here. And then um, uh, we, we have a bit of a strange situation. We're having a double wicket competition between myself and Ruvimbo Chakoreka because we're both driving the desk tonight. So, Ruvimbo, good to have you along as well. Nobody ever thought it would happen, but it did happen, Dean. Finally, you're driving the desk. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, well, we continue to make history here at Cafe Talk 100.4 FM because a man who is totally our own is driving the desk. Right, okay, let's get into the more serious things. Um, let me start off. Samu, you've never, you and Adam have never been on the show before. Um, you were here with Mary Ann, but you were uh, kind of in a distance. I'd like you to bring us up to speed as to the conversations you had been having with the SRC leading up to Zimbabwe, not touring Ireland with the, with the men's team a couple of weeks ago. Um, because there was, there was a lot of behind the scenes stuff that was happening that not too many people know about. Yeah, um, we were supposed to um, leave Zimbabwe for Ireland um, on the 30th of June. And um, if I'm not mistaken, about uh, 10 days or so before that, uh, the ZC board was suspended. And um, this uh, actually led to uh, the funding from ICC being uh, stopped, and um, we were yet to to pay for the for the for the tickets. The bookings had been done and everything, so it was just uh, yet uh, it was just a, a matter of uh, making a payment. So obviously, when that happened, um, I was in communication with uh, with uh, uh, the SRC board and uh, the interim committee that had been put in place. And um, they had assured me that they were trying by all means to, to make sure that the girls travel. But uh, I'm sure that that, that couldn't really happen uh, up until the, the last day before they were supposed to travel. We then told that uh, this could hap couldn't happen. 
And Raza, while while all of this was happening uh, to the ladies, you were you and the team were obviously over in in the Netherlands, and then you moved on to Ireland. Did you begin to start to feel this this horrible serpent of unease and dread that oh my gosh, something is actually something really uh, of main of real catastrophe is about to happen? Um, look, I think that before th those feelings start to sink in, I think what what most of us, if not all of us, were really sad about that our Lady Chevrons won travelling because we were really looking forward to be playing on the same day with them. Um, the fixtures were in such that the one day Lady Chevrons were meant to play the morning game and, and the Chevrons were meant to play the afternoon and the other, the second game, we were meant to play the first game and Lady Chevrons were meant to play the second game. So th that was going to be a history where, you know, men and women team playing on the same day, same venue. Uh, you know, we were quite looking forward for that. Guys were really excited for that as well. And speaking to some of the girls as well, they were really looking forward to coming and, and playing on the same day as, as the guys as well. So so I think when the when the tweet broke out from Cricket Island and we saw that, first of all, that, that kind of took us really aback. We were sad in a way that these girls have made strides, huge strides, you know, out of the odds to be fair. Uh, to reach where they where they reached and then for them not to be in Ireland where we were looking forward to support them and they were looking forward to support us most importantly playing cricket um, that kind of that kind of hurted us to be honest mm. and and speaking to some of the officials from Cricket Island if I'll be very honest it was it hurt to them as well um, because they have made all the arrangements on that side but the uncertainty started to started to creep in you know when when we thought hang on a minute here a lot of things are are in in gray areas now what's going to happen um, you know as as groups we were getting together to make sure whatever happens the suspension is the last thing that needs to happen and if we if we can do anything about it we would do something about it so um, not in Holland as such but Ireland as the tour started to progress we started to feel that you know maybe ICC may consider that option because the media started to report the news started to come out so there was a bit of uncertainty yes Dean and then Mary and you, uh, so it was a, a bittersweet, bitter symphony for you because you had the, the, the shattering news <coughs> that, that you would not be traveling uh, as a team to Ireland. Then you got a, a bit of good news where you and three other players, um, Anesu Mushangwe, Sean, Sean Mayers, and of course uh, Tasman Granger were part of a development team that were going to play T20 matches in England. So although that particular hope had been shattered of you not traveling with the Lady Chevrons, there was still that slight glimmer that, you know, at least you were going to get some form of recognition and Coach Adam Chifu as well. But then only for that to be shattered as well. I mean, uh, the last time I spoke to you, you, you were devastated. I, I can't imagine how you're feeling right now. Um, Dean, I think I've, I, I don't know which, which other point I should get with just being frustrated and devastated because, you know, things keep getting bad. Um, there's never uh, a day I've, I've received good news for the past, you know, three weeks. Um, and the ladies were really looking forward to at least representing, you know, Zimbabwe when we go at the Women's Development, um, Global Development Squad yeah. um, program. So for us not to be traveling on Thursday, you know, we were told yesterday. Um, yeah, we are sad about that. So, so up until up until yesterday, which is Monday, yes. um, d d were you still under the impression that you know what we aren't travelling as Team Zimbabwe, but we will still be able to do something by travelling as as a unit? Were you still under the impression that you were going to be travelling to England up until yesterday? Yes, Dean, we were. My gosh, yeah. Uh, Adam Chifu, let's bring you into this now. Um, so we'll just to play a bit of a s musical chairs or microphone chairs. Uh, I mean, uh, you as the coach, you have worked just as hard as, as anybody, um, be it behind the scenes, the people who work behind the scenes, the players, because you coach this team and you've seen them develop from a group of very talented amateurs to a very well-oiled, well-balanced professional team. Um, just explain the feelings that you as coach are experiencing. So you had the same experience as Marianne and as the three players in the sense that, right, well, we're no longer traveling as the Lady Chevrons, but there's a glimmer of hope because we are still going to be going to England, but only for those walls to come crashing down yesterday as well. Yeah, very much disappointing, Dean. Um, I think if you look at uh, this year, like the Lady Chevrons, we opened up our season uh, early in January. We had a, a tour to Namibia, we, uh, we, we played five T20s, we won them, all of them, we brought the trophy home. And we came back, we were in camp again for a month or two, and then we went to Uganda, played in a series, and we won, and we came back. You know, the qualifiers again, they were here, yeah, we did our best, and you know, we came, we came out tops. And you know, 
things look to be, uh, seem to be going in the right direction for us. You know, we, we put in a lot of hours, you know, in, in terms of our um, preparation, uh, physically, mentally, and you know, technically. We, we, we try to deal with every aspect of the game. You see, um, but you know, suddenly to get to this point where we are in in the dark, it's it's, it's quite dev devastating to say the least. And uh, of course, uh, you at home are more than welcome to get in touch with us as well on zero seven one seven triple seven triple seven. Send us a WhatsApp me message. There's many people you can talk to. We have uh, Sikanda Razabat here, who of course is uh, being a part of a very successful team. We have the very successful captain of the Lady Chevrons, Marianne Musonda, who's here with us as well. Adam Chifu, the coach of the Lady Chevrons, and uh, the manager, the or ever smiling. Though I don't think she's smiling at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> Samun Kewani, who's here with us as well. Uh, you can direct your questions to whoever you like, and I'm sure they'll be very glad to answer them. Zero Zero seven one seven triple seven triple seven is the number. Now, Rovimbo, I would just like to bring you in here as well because you have been following um, the ongoing events between Zimbabwe cricket and the SRC, like everybody has, of course. But uh, just uh, that uh, typical Rovimbo uh, professional uh, opinion that you have. I mean, it is a mess, but we kind of expected it, didn't we? We did expect the mess. Um, we had hoped it. We had hoped it wouldn't get this far, um, especially as uh, Sikanda was also talking about it. That as the news began to break out, we kind of expected that maybe ICC would take this decision. We had hoped that maybe it wouldn't go this far, um, th with maybe the SRC and ZC not coming down to sit down and actually come up with a resolution, and see how they would move around things. But ultimately, it looks like SRC have kept the foot on the gas. As, uh, the ZC board as well, uh, they have uh, continued their appeal with the la latest one being of that taking it to the Supreme Court. We are yet to hear what the judgment will be on that one. Uh, but ultimately, it's looking like a pretty big mess. And the people who shouldn't be suffering ultimately are now the ones who are suffering. And isn't isn't that always the case though it's it's always the person who doesn't deserve to suffer and and, and mary i remember saying this to you when you were here the last time i said that it, it's a bit like a family having a fallout mom and dad which does happen it doesn't matter how good your relationship is mom and dad are the ones who fight and argue but at the end of the day it's the kids who go to bed hungry yes dean um it's still the same thing i think in, uh, as rainbow said as well um there should be resolutions that do not affect the actual game. The game should not stop. Um, so that is what I was expecting, but nothing has happened. Um, so I'm really still surprised that, you know, the, the game is bleeding out and nothing has been done. That's a, a very, very sad but true expression. I, I, I'm going to ask both of you current players, Raza and Mary, and, and you both free to, to answer, uh, you know, at will. Whoever wants to go first, uh, it's, it's absolutely no problem. If the SRC were to take a step back and say, all right, well, you know what, we've done what we can, but the ICC have told us to reinstate the board. For the sake of cricket, we are going to do that. We're not very happy with what's happened, but we're going to reinstate the board. Would both of you players feel happy playing under a board which has been littered with allegations and controversy for many, many years? Would you happy to revert back to that board because, after all, you will be doing what you what you love doing and that's playing cricket for your country or has it got to a point and maybe the situations are slightly different for mary compared to raza uh, and if so then i do apologize but i'll ask the question anyway would both of you still want to play under the current board who on the odd occasion certainly have let you down as players but you still had your satisfaction of representing your country or has the time come to to move on and say no you know what if these guys are back I'm I'm moving on and I'm going to try and play cricket elsewhere. You want to go first, Raza? I'm a gentleman. I'll let the ladies go first. <laughs> All right, lovely. <laughs> That's nice. That's well done. Um, <laughs> my my opinion is informed by the journey I've been on, my experience, and uh, where my team is going. So yes, um, uh, for us, reinstatement is is what we're looking for because we have qualifiers in a bit. We have just been kicked out of uh, this tournament we're going for on Thursday. So for me, um, reinstatement is, is what I'm, I'm looking for, is what would satisfy me and, and my team and where we want to go. 
So you, you, at, the, at the end of the day, you want to play cricket. You don't yes. really care who it is, whether it's a brand new board which is put in place or whether it's the old board who continues. As long as you can get on that aeroplane and go to those World Cup qualifiers and hopefully qualify for the World Cup, that is what you and your team want. Yes. And Raza? Um, Dean, uh, first of all, I'll say to Mary and to Adam and the three other girls that missed out on a global thing, I, 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 cr I openly criticize the decision, from by, decision by ICC to suspend us. Um, and I would say that again, for, for, for them, for ICC to deny Adam and the other three girls an opportunity to be better cricketers and to serve Zimbabwe better, when they said that we're going to have a review in three months, now you take that opportunity from Adam and the three girls away, are you telling me that Zimbabwe has been suspended forever? And if you've only suspended us for three months and you're going to have a review in three months, then why can't the gentlemen and the ladies go on a global tournament so that once the suspension is over, which we are hoping it will be, it has benefited the cricketers and, and Adam. So there I think I have a huge problem with ICD to, to stop the girls and the gentlemen going. Now, before I answer the reinstatement part and things like that, has anyone seen ICC reply? No. No. So we are, we are guessing or we are implying that ICC have said to reinstate the old board. Is that true? It, it certainly would appear that that, that would okay. be okay. Yeah, what so, yes. so this is where I'm going to get to. So what if the other part of the coin is telling that ICC is asking for fair elections? But we haven't seen the report. So people are talking what they want to talk and people are believing what they want to believe. I want to s see ICC report first that what actually is the reason, because we weren't allowed to speak, players weren't allowed to speak, ICC haven't asked the players, SSC hasn't asked the players. This is, this is something that's going on that needs to rectify itself by looking at ICC report. We're jumping the guns without even knowing what the ICC report is. What if reinstatement part is not in ICC report? And what if there is? I don't know that. I want to wait for ICC report to know exactly why we've been dismissed or suspended for. That's my first point. Second, I've said it in the changing room as well, there is no way I'm going to play a political pawn in anyone's chess. Now, why must I fight for chairmen? I fight for cricket and I will pay for anyone who's willing to pay my salaries. The reason I wanted to speak to ICC was so that national contracts are pretty decent, I would say that. But I do believe on the ground the franchise cricketers are suffering. And if someone has read through the Godwill Mamiyo's tweet, it was a it was a fair tweet. Yes. And I refuse to be part of that senior group that he was referring to. And hence, if I have to take a stand, whether it's alone or whether it's with a group of players or whether it's with a group of management, whoever that is, I will do that. But I believe that there there has to be there has to be. In my opinion, that we mustn't cricketers must not be on whether you are whether you have for men or women's side to be to be to be politicized. Let us let us let us just play cricket. Having said that, why must why did I not fight for previous chairman? Why did I not why did I not sorry fi uh, fight for previous chairman or chairman before that? Yeah. People are asking me where does my loyalty lies? My loyalty lies whoever wins the elections or whoever is in the office. I would say that again. So my loyalty lies with that person. For example, tomorrow you're going to ask me which, uh, which president do you support. Whoever is the president of the country, I support that person. Don't, don't ask me to get involved with politics because I'm a cricketer and I'm really bad at politics. I can't do that. I will slip and make a fool of myself. That I know. So anyone who is in the office, fairly winning elections or whatever, I will support him because he's the one who's going to be paying for my family. Uh, well-being, I'm going to be earning that money so that I can look after my family. And that's where my loyalty lies. My loyalty lies with the game more than with anyone else. That's very, very well put by both of you. Um, Ruvimbo, I don't know if we've had any messages uh, that have come through. Uh, yes, we do have a couple of messages. Uh, this one is uh, coming through and saying, Good evening, Dean and Ruvimbo. I'm Tino in Zimri Park. Um, well, first one is uh, maybe responding to a tweet that you had. First of all, I hope Dean is okay. I saw his tweet questioning whether he would hand in a resignation letter or not. Well, uh, here at Capitalk, we won't let him do that, regardless of the situation. Uh, and said he was really touched by that. But he said, secondly, it's heartbreaking. As I remember in the last series against the UAE, we witnessed uh, Sikanda Raza sacrificing a lot by partaking in that tournament with an injured hand hand then at the end of the day 
all this would be in vain because of a single brutal decision. Whether or not there was a wrongdoing at ZC, we surely should get a convincing report of the SRC's findings. Well, I hope I can actually send you that because I do have that as well as what they presented in London. Now, at the end of the day, we all wish that the game develops and sport in Zimbabwe be the one thing that unites us as a nation, as we saw in last year's Cricket World Cup qualifiers. Another one is from Kuziva. Uh, always good to hear from you, Kuziva, saying disappointing judgment by the ICC. You would think they don't even want Zimbabwe to grow in cricket. Now they want to reinstate the board that was so bad. Now I'm hearing that the Lady Chevrons that were supposed to play in uh, T20 Super League in England can't even travel. This is very disappointing, really. Why stop cricket altogether? Couldn't they just put us in administration, uh, let the games being played, uh, whilst the games were being played, and things run smoothly? I find that a strange decision. Another one coming from England, uh, this is Ranga in Portsmouth. He says, hi, Dean, it's good uh, to, to be back on Dean at Stumps. The, I, I believe that's listening to it. I feel as if the ICC were ignorant, considering that SRC came with good intentions. So those are the messages there, Dean. Right. Well, uh, wonderful to hear from all of you. And uh, you, you can continue to uh, send your, your messages to 0717. Uh, triple seven triple seven goodness me I, I i think i've been totally overcome by what what's happening here in the studio tonight i look and i see very very sad and upset people here and and with great reason and um i don't know uh, some if there's anything else that that you'd like to add is there maybe any more of the story that you'd like to tell us maybe some promises that were maybe made behind the scenes and and that didn't materialize is there anything that perhaps that you'd like the listener uh, and all of us to know here on Dean at Stumps because you were here last time and it was unfortunate that we didn't get to speak to you but tonight the wicket is good for you to bat on. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, well, um, not a good uh, moment but uh, obviously not much is, is being communicated to, to us whether it's from SRC or it's from the interim board or whoever. Um, Although what I, what I would like to, to, um, to stress as well, maybe to help Raza as well, is that uh, now that we are suspended, we are not allowed to take part in any ICC events. So that has unfortunately affected um, the ladies, um, the four ladies that are supposed to go and the coach. Uh, it really would have been nice for them to say, okay, we're giving you guys exceptions, but this suspension means everything comes to a stop at standstill. So I would really like, uh, whether it's SRC or whoever it is uh, that can make that decision to really and quickly understand how serious this issue is. There's no cricket at the moment. And if nothing gets done for the next three months, we are out. All right. I, I would like to jump in, sorry, Dean, uh, on this one. Um, I th looking at the whole perspective of, of things, um, I believe that the ZC board as well as um, ICC here are at fault. Looking at the ZC board first and foremost, what got this wheel turning was the fact that they were asked by SRC to halt their elective annual general meeting and there was a forensic audit an independent forensic audit which needed to be conducted for a sum of 2.8 million dollars which src felt was missing or was misappropriated or defrauded or whichever way they would like to put it when mr taongo mkushani came here as the chairman he came in and said that i could not stop the meeting because the meeting could go ahead without me as the chairman being there I find I found that sorry to say slightly absurd because you sit you sit as the chairman of the board at the point that the public body it's not a government body because it's a public body as an act of parliament came and said that we've got issues with you you still would have remained chairman and the board still would have remained in its position had you then said look guys these are the accounts that we have these are the issues at hand they did not have to go through with the elections but them going through with the elections was a direct defying of SRC. And SRC then put their foot on the gas and ultimately said, look, you guys are suspended. 
And I would also hasten to say and brave, be brave enough to say that they called the bluff of SRC, knowing that ICC would be, have their backs and say that the board must be reinstated. And so I feel that is the biggest issue that we have where we've now got egos playing at hand here, whether it's both from SRC and ZC, they were playing. Then ICC got the presentation and I got I went through the presentation. I believe it's a 48 page document, Dean. Yes, yes a 48 page document uh, talking about why they had susp uh, suspended the ZC board from uh, issues where they felt uh, money was being defrauded, but also gave examples of close to five nations that have had pure government intervention from the likes of India, Sri Lanka, Pakistan, and so on. Whilst ours is not even a government intervention because an act of parliament is not government. So I have got a problem with the way that things ended up going here, whereby ZC could have held their horses because they still would have been the board right now, even if SRC still had a problem with them, gone through the due process and held their elective annual general meeting after all these issues had been done. But I think, some of you really want to edge into this one. Yeah. Or let no, Adam I'll, 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 I'll let <laughs> Adam talk. <laughs> yes, um, <coughs> sorry, excuse me. Um, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's very sad that uh, we, we have come to this point. But uh, I must say that a lot of things have happened and a lot of things have been said for the past three, four weeks. But uh, where we are right now is what we need to focus on. The ICC have made a ruling. Without the ICC, Zimbabwe cricket cannot survive. The ICC does not need Zimbabwe cricket. Having said that, uh, there's a lot of uh, uh, ways that have been exchanged between SRC and ZC. But at the end of the day, whatever decision that has to be made, cricket has to win. No one is bigger than the game right here. SRC or the sustainment board. Whatever happens, whatever is done, cricket has to win. If I can ask, the SRC board uh, had their first meeting on the 13th and they suspended Zimbabwe cricket on the 14th. Where did they get info the information to suspend Zimbabwe cricket? I'm, I'm just asking. I, I don't have the facts. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Um, the chairman of the SRC, not disrespecting him, he said uh, issues with Zimbabwe cricket representing uh, players' issues against mobile cricket. Is he doing this in good faith or is uh, pushing for uh, personal vendettas? Again, we don't know. But um, I should hasten to say that Zimbabwe cricket needs ICC for the money, for the fixtures. Right now, the ICC has made a ruling that for us to get the money and the fixtures, SRC needs to reinstate the board. And in my personal opinion, I think that should be done as quickly as possible. If there are any other issues that SRC feel need to be addressed locally, that can be done. The SRC can summon the board. They can talk in their boardrooms without us knowing with the game going on. It does not have to come to, to a situation where right now we, we, we are not able to play cricket. We cannot do anything. Personally, I've, meet up, I, I've missed out on an uh, opportunity to go and coach at the highest level of club cricket in the world. When, when, when am I going to get that chance again? Even the ladies, probably that, that was their platform to showcase their talent, you know, break through the world. It's, it, it may never happen again. You see, so people need to look at the bigger picture of this, right? Employees, we, we haven't been paid for the past two months. We don't know where uh, our lives are going. We don't know what's happening with our careers. The interim uh, board, I, I believe, if they had the money to pay us, they could they would have paid us right now. But I, I won't believe that they don't have the money. So, to be honest, it is my firm belief that at the end of the day, cricket should be the winner. Um, uh, you are listening to Dean at Stumps on Capi Talk 100.4 FM, uh, Harare's Heartbeat. And that's exactly why we are Harare's Heartbeat, because we, get, we uh, get on top of situations as they happen. Uh, and uh, perhaps you've just tuned in. And if you have, good evening to you and welcome. You can send us uh, your WhatsApp message on 717 And uh, if you have just tuned in, let me just remind you as to who is in the studio. On my immediate right, we have my co-driver, Ruvimbo Chakoreka. But then our guests, <laughs> more importantly, they're my myself and Ravimbo. We have Mary Ann Musonda, the captain of the Lady Chevrons. We have Adam Chifu, the head coach of the uh, Lady Chevrons. Sikanda Raza Bhatt, national team player. 
and uh, we also have the manager of the lady Chevron's Samu Nkwani. Um, is there anybody who would like to, uh, I would actually just like to leave the floor very open here. Is there anybody who would like to add anything to what has been said here? Well, uh, um, I, I, I can start. Yeah. I, I've, I've got a lot, sorry, to, to, to say, <laughs> no, uh, because no. uh, this, this issue is, is quite touching to me. You know, um, there's, there's, there's a lot uh, we stand to lose as Zimbabwe if we get uh, expelled. I believe that the ban uh, uh, is a window period that we've give, been given by ICC to sort ourselves out. And with the caliber we've got in Zimbabwe, we were capable of doing that. So it, it, uh, it's, it's very important, and on behalf of my change room, technical staff, the players, the employees, it's very important that this situation is addressed as soon as possible. Anybody? Yeah, um, probably that will be me next. Um, you know, speaking probably as an employee, uh, this is quite sad. You know, at one moment, everything, you've got a job, the following day, you don't know what's happening and uh, this is quite frustrating for for all of us um, you know you don't know what's what, what, you know what's going to happen and yet we have been um, given the impression that a decision can be made and nothing is impossible um, we are here today because we as the lady chevrons are the ones that have been most affected than anybody else. But people seem to be taking their sweet time to make a decision and cricket is the loser at the end of the day. Something can still be done and there is still time but it's got to be done as urgent as possible. Otherwise we stand to lose quite a lot. Politics is, doesn't have space at the moment. Cricket is the one that has to win at the end of the day. Yeah. Um, quite sorry to just jump in there. <laughs> sorry, Marianne. Um, uh, there is a question, and I believe maybe you would be also best to uh, answer that. Uh, this one is um, from Ranga in Portsmouth, saying, my question goes to anyone in the studio. If the board is reinstated and ICC meet in October, are we going to be well prepared to play the T20 qualifiers? Well, that, 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 that remains to be seen. Uh, that, that's why we, we're saying that uh, it's very important that uh, the SRC um, um, and the suspended board and at, at most the minister, I think she, she, she needs to step in. She needs to step in and make a decision, a very quick decision. Um, I believe one gathering, one meeting can, can sort this mess out. I'm, I'm sure the sooner we sort this thing out, I mean, we, we can back, get back on track. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and, uh, and Mary, I mean, uh, you uh, as a player, you'd be wanting all the um, the time, uh, you, you and all the players would have been wanting all the time possible to, to prepare for these, these World Cup qualifiers. And now that's not going to happen for you. So ev even if there were to be a, d a positive decision, it's, it's still going to more than likely affect you and the team negatively due to the lack of game time that you would have had. Yeah, we've lost a couple of... Uh couple of weeks but tell you what um, it would be better for us to actually go it's there's still time as um, we're trying to highlight the decision just has to be made as soon as possible you know because um, time is running out every day we lose is is a lot it's actually a lot and Raza what what happens what happens to you and to the rest of the team if I hear correctly you uh, are off to play against the uh, for the Amsterdam, what are they called? Amsterdam Knights, I think they're called. What are they called? The yeah, they are called that. Amsterdam Knights. So, I mean, I, I guess for you, there's a little bit of, you know, at least there's something for you to, to look forward to. Um, but knowing you and the kind and generous and, and very concerned person that you are, you wear your heart in your sleeve, much like I do, um, I would imagine that uh, part of, of what you need to do will be focusing on, on delivering the results for the Amsterdam Knights, but a very big part of your heart will be with everybody else who is not fortunate enough to be playing any form of cricket now. Um, do you know, I think, 
I think one thing that, that my upbringing and my family gave me out of a lot of things is humanity. I mean, of course I'll be happy that I'm representing Zimbabwe and there's a Zimbabwe representation at Amsterdam Nights, but to see my fellow brother and sister suffering, what sort of a joy would that give me? I think if the decision is made and Zimbabwe is playing international cricket, I think I would be able to perform a lot better because my heart will be at a lot more ease. Um, coming back to your question, the reason I cannot answer that question is because I have not seen the ICC report. And for me to actually say something on fiction that I am hearing from social media or from people is for me is a waste of time. Um, now, I was watching Kirsty's interview with Trevor yesterday. Now, the minister said that she hasn't interfered in any way. So, to me, that is a good sign that she's an, she's an honorable, she's a sport, she's a gold medalist. Surely that's enough for ICC to know that, that, that this, this woman is, is well respected in all the world. If she's saying she hasn't interfered, she hasn't interfered. What I really need to see is that ICC report, and I, and I just hope a day after that there is a there is a solution because that would clear out all the doubts, all the rumors that we are hearing right now. Because there are so many rumors flying for why we've been suspended. Um, people, again, I would say, are trusting to believe who who they want to believe. In my opinion, now, you 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 ask me if if um, if if I would play international cricket under the board and I, and I answer that but he, here is my one of the things I think I pray to Allah that this thing gets sorted quickly fine but I also find that this is the opportunity where we sit down and actually say gentlemen we cannot go forward by paying eight and a half eight dollars and fifty cents per day to our franchise cricketers we cannot do that yeah. this has to improve national contracts are good I get that but is that it? Are you telling me there is close to 100 odd international, 100 odd franchise cricketers leaving women cricketers out? You add their 30 member squad, 130 women and men cricketer, and we have to get $10 a day in eco cash or cash for that matter, whatever that is. Is that enough for us? Uh, technically, a franchise cricketer is playing for his dinner because he gets lunch at the, at the ground, he gets breakfast at home, and he's playing for dinner, not to forget that he has to go back. That's transport money. The transport money is hiking. He has to come back the following day. Is that enough for a franchise cricketer? No. Should, we, should we just keep quiet and say, yeah, that's fine. Everything is honky dory. Will we allow this, this madness to carry on for $10? I was, I was in Ireland, and, 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 and one, of the, one of the board members from Cricket Ireland said that as much as we have little teams, but we actually pay match fees and allowances. He didn't tell me what allowances match fees are, but he said, I'm embarrassed to tell you what those are because you may feel bad because you guys are getting ten dollars so do we just keep quiet for our brother franchise cricketers and says yeah that's fine as long as national cricketers are getting I refuse to be part of that senior group that have led this team for so long and have only looked after their own well-being our franchise contracts have come down drastically I remember when Samu was in charge of Bulawayo I remember franchise contracts used to be a lot better people could survive the number of franchise contracts we are getting for the last few years have come down, including the allowances we used to get. I remember starting franchise cricket, I used to get $35 on a non-traveling day and $25 or $20 on a playing day. It's $10 a day now. With our grant actually gone up. So, so you, you ask me that if I want to play, I want to play only if some of these issues are addressed regarding my brothers and sisters so that their, life, their livelihood is better. It's just not my livelihood that needs to get better, it's theirs as well. Now, franchise cricket standard, people ask me why it's going down. It's going down because we are not motivated to play franchise cricket. What is there to play? We want, Tuskers won T20 a few months back. We haven't seen the winning amount yet. Where is it? Yeah. It is meant to be us. It is meant to be the players, the fifth in players who were in the change, you know, winning that tournament. It may be as little as $30, but give us $30 to players. It may be a little man, but it can make a huge difference in these hard times. We have a lot of players feeling the same thing, but don't want to talk about it. That's okay. That is okay. At least they come to me and speak about it. How would you feel if one of your family members, or your, well, my team is my family, if one of my team members, when I play domestic cricket, comes to me and says, could I please borrow X amount of money so that I can buy medicine for my mother because $10 doesn't cover for it. How, do you, how does that make you feel? And all those franchise cricketers who may be listening, they know who they are, who came to me and said that. And I'm not the only one. This happens at every franchise. So do we just stay quiet for our franchise brothers to suffer and say everything is fine? Do we stay quiet about that Solomon Meyer has retired out of the blue? I've said it, I've said it on social media that I, I, I do not agree with his decision. But I respect it. 
because he told me why he's doing what he's done and I can't share that it's not in my capacity a lot of tears were shed before that decision my word I can assure you that we went to we went to Europe without our best squad no one seems to discuss about that people are saying chevrons are useless chevrons are this and we seem to be taking a lot of the brunt we we, we okay with that but we didn't go with our best squad because we did not engage in time with the players that decided to go to club cricket in the UK why not because their franchise contracts are poor or maybe because their winter contracts were extremely poor for them to leave franchise for them to leave club cricket because the club cricket in England is paying more so are you telling me it's okay for Zimbabwe it's okay we get digged every time because we are refusing to engage with our best players in the country is it okay so we have Anesu Mushangwe in UK right now what if in two years time that thing is a regular thing can our lady chevrons afford to lose their top all-rounder who has made into the top 15 in the world and be it's okay you're earning more there or can we actually look after Anesu's well-being and says you know what Anesu has broken through it could be Mary it could be Shane it could be Tasman it could be any other breaking into club cricket we need to protect our girls well-being now and act now we lost blessing Mujrabani who was the shining light in our in our team and we could not engage with him in time because we were sitting on our egos I don't know because we were sitting on whatever we were he came back played the series we could not engage with him for whatever reasons or says you know what we'll buy out of your contract why not well uh, sorry Dean we have got a lot of messages yeah. after what uh, Sikandar Raza has just spoken about here uh, sorry maybe Adam you can come through before we get to the messages well um, uh, I don't mean to uh, argue with uh, uh, Raza yeah, but I, I think the, uh, it's very important that we, we, we don't get emotional about this uh, it's very important that we look at the born hard facts we've got on the ground yes uh, there should be an improvement I agree with that I'm also involved with the franchise system there should be an improvement in terms of remuneration allowances and everything but the biggest question is uh, is getting suspended from ICC and not getting the money the solution definitely not so and and also how much money is Zimbabwe cricket uh, getting from uh, ICC annually is it enough to pay guys as much as South Africa is paying their players is it enough to pay the guys as much as England is going to pay the guys definitely not I think we'll end the list amongst the test nations so I mean we need to strike a balance I, I, I don't know how much in, in in, uh, precisely we get and how much guys get in terms of salaries because that's probably in confidential but uh, we, we should look at the bigger picture right now we need we need ICC we need the money and that that, that should be our main focus all right thank you so much uh, Adam for that one well apparently what Mr. Mkotlani said here when he came for the breakfast uh, show he said that we get nine million a year that's what he said uh, in terms of the grant from ICC so I guess maybe where Sikanda is coming from is saying that nine million surely maybe we could do something much better it's not, it's not, not, not it, uh, how much do you need to host the test match if I can ask well I'm not so sure well I, yeah, yeah yeah oh I would um, you know like for instance uh, for us just to go to Ireland mm -hmm. um, it cost us uh, our bill was about um, almost hundred thousand US this is just the lady chevrons no yeah, not, no, not the men's this is just the, the women's team mm -hmm. so and this is US dollars and the allowances that Raza is talking about uh, everybody gets money get paid gets paid in US dollars as well that nine million dollars I'll be honest with you is not enough I am not the head of finance but from my middle management point of view I know that money is not enough because we don't also get to do all the programs that we would have loved to do that nine million is just not enough all right so that one is a fact so let's bring through uh, some of the questions so this one is saying um, sadly oh it's voice of reason okay thank you <laughs> uh, very interesting so voice of reason says a few points number one SRC needs to reinstate the board and then do their audits ETC and release a report cricket needs to continue simple mm -hmm. number two this is a lesson to all staff players and supporters that watched and participated in the ill running of Zimbabwe cricket for 10 to 15 years this is the result of years of mismanagement I hope this is sorted and every individual in ZC should ensure they protect their jobs by not accepting any mismanagement Raza thank you for the truth it bothers me how top administrators are getting rich and the players are struggling 
Uh, this one is coming through from Tafadzwa. He's saying $10 a day for franchise cricket. Where does the money from the ICC go to? I believe uh, somewhere has given us a little bit of an insight into that. The hottest place in hell should be reserved for those ZC folks. Nonsense. So, are you guys saying that SRC hasn't spoken of a roadmap for the way forward? Because I am hearing a lot of uncertainty in your conversation. Shouldn't the SRC need a uh, uh, lead, rather, in fixing this since they stepped in? The Franchise Cricket Daily Allowances are pittance. This needs to be addressed. This is Len in Borodil. Uh Another one, this is from George S. saying, good points from Raza. Uh, this one is saying it is important to understand that the SRC is an arm of the government in sports administration. It should also be understood that the international federations like the ICC were always treated like that. It has happened with football, athletics and others. To that extent, SRC must find a better way of using the whip if they need to. Um, yeah, so those are all of the messages coming through there, Dean. Well... Wow. Okay, so we definitely have some incredibly, uh, and I, I think Mary, Adam, Raza, and Samu, you will now understand how how very nice it was to, to engage with you on Dean at Stumps. It, it's an incredibly sad and emotional situation that we find ourselves in. But I think you, you, you get some sort of an idea as to the love and support and loyalty that both men's and women's team have, um, wh which I think is just absolutely outstanding. Mary, you as a player, and I, and I specifically want to speak to a, a lady player here, um, uh, Raza brought up some incredibly good points ab about the way that franchise cricketers are being treated and, and you know, obviously the, the appalling circumstances that they have to try and play and perform under. You as, as lady cricketers, is it, is it a very similar situation? Is it even worse than, than what Raza has described? Um, situations are similar, of course, because we are under the same organization. Um, but what I would like to say is that um, actually stopping everything and killing the sport, I don't think that's the solution. Um, so, yeah, that's that's what I'd, I'd, I'd say. Okay. Uh, Rubimba, I can see you wanting to lean in here to say something. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes, I was just about to say uh, two minutes left, but uh, uh, Raza has got something that yes. I would like to switch here. Um, to to basically end and, and, and say things, I, what, what everybody said, I think what we got to understand believe that we all have lost because the finances have stopped. So at no point am I saying that it's right or wrong. All I'm saying is that ICC maybe should have taken us under administration for three months and come to Zimbabwe and whatever their doubts have, they come and clear it without stopping us from playing. Because what ICC, where I'm getting at, ICC, we haven't been paid for two months and, and the next review is in three months. Can ICC tell us how we're going to survive for the next five months without our salaries? How our families are going to survive without our salaries? How our extended families are going to survive for five months in Zimbabwe? And it's, it, is, it is not that where there is a grant system that I can live off the grant or loan system where I can take a loan and repay back. And what if, God forbid, if they says, you know what? Uh, no, we, we're going to give another three, if we're going to give a review after another three months, then where do boys and girls go? A lot, of cre a lot of careers are at stake here, and ICC really needs to take that into consideration. And I would love to see the same panel back maybe once we have the ICC report where everything is clear. But cr stopping cricket does not, I'm not saying that stopping cricket is, is the way forward or is the right thing. No, at, at no point if it if comes out that way to Samu and Adam and to Mary, that's not what I'm saying. Here because we all have lost because all our, ourselves and our families are suffering together. And, 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 and I'm not, it's not that. She, Mary Ann is happy to see her family being fine and Samu's family to suffer. I don't think so. That's the sort of person she is. Or for that matter, anyone who's an employee of ZC. Yeah. Yeah, uh, having said that, Raza, I think it's, it's very important that we note that as Zimbabwe, we cannot afford a fight with ICC. We have no leverage to fight ICC. Yes, we might feel a uh, short change here and there. The best thing we can do is engage ICC. Right now, ICC have made a ruling that, you know, engage the board, we uh, keep drip funding you, you get involved in playing cricket, that's what we need to do. And then from there, we can sort out all the domestic issues. All right. Well, uh, the time is now 7 o'clock, which means it is time for the news. Dina Stumps has, co has come and gone very quickly. Thank you all very much indeed for coming into the studio. And uh, thank you for listening. Thank you for your contributions. And uh, we will be back again next week, same time. But until then, it's good night from all of us.
Tune in again next week and catch Dean at Stumps on Capitalk 100.4 FM, leading the conversation. News on Capitalk 100.4 FM. Harare's Heartbeat. Good evening, uh, Top Story. This hour, the Zimbabwe Agricultural Society, ZAS, has shifted the inaugural Zimbabwe Agricultural Show dates. Addressing the media today, ZAS Chief Executive Officer uh, Dr. Anxious Masuka said the show will be held from 19 to 24 August 2019. And in other news, Harare residents are complaining about the latest fuel price increase, saying they, this has led to price hikes. Capital FM News spoke to some residents this afternoon who said they are now failing to make ends meet. Another City Council Acting Director of Water, Engineer Pakamile Mabenamoyo, has proposed installation of solar-powered boreholes at public institutions like schools and clinics as part of measures to curb the persistent water crisis in Harare. 